So today's guest, in my opinion, is one of the hottest prospects, not just in British boxing, but in world boxing. Um, you could say I'm a little bit biased because we're actually close friends, but at the same time, he's won five fights all in the first minute, uh, all by stoppage. Um, it's Jack El uh the king of crocky. Aren't you, mate? Yeah, um, I just want Mark for having me on. And mm. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, welcome, mate. It's good to have you on. So a little story about how I, um, I met Jack. I've got a 13 year old son, I took him into Croxter Gym, which is a local gym, um, to where we live about four or five, about five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Maybe five years ago. Wow. And um, I walked into the gym. I'd been in there before, but on this occasion, obviously I was taking my son in. And I uh, walked to the doors and seen two brothers absolutely knocking the shit out of each other. And I can only describe it as one of the best spas I've honestly ever seen in my life and I've been around a lot of gyms over the years, MMA gyms, boxing gyms. I'm no, um, I don't profess to be a boxing expert, but I do know a thing or two. But I just remember seeing the two of them, two brothers, and uh, just thinking, wow, what a future they've got. If you can keep them in the gym and they can stay on the straight and narrow. Obviously Jack's here today, he's five and oh as a professional. Got an amazing team around him, he's doing all the right things. And uh, definitely, in my opinion, as I say, destined for absolutely, absolutely greatness. That's like, you know, so I won't say too much. But uh, thanks for coming on, Jack. And how's it going? How's things? Yeah, um, nice one for having me on, Mark. And yeah, things are going well at the minute. I'm training hard. I'm in fight camp at the minute. Um, next fight's the 13th of April in Manchester Arena. And I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Looking forward to going six and all with six knockouts. Yeah, it's looking that way, isn't it? How are you finding yeah. getting sparring partners and things now? Um, it's been very hard at the minute. I've asked everyone for sparring. <laughs> no one wants to spar me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've spoke to my manager, Scott, and he's getting two Mexicans over to spar me. So mm. I'm looking, looking forward to that because um, the tough and... That's only going to bring the best out of yeah, me. Yeah, you need to be sparring with people at yeah. that level, don't you know? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. So normally, mate, we'll just go into like a little bit about your background. Because even though as much as I know you, it's like, and I, I know a bit, Yeah. like I don't know everything. So I'm going to treat this like, not like I've met you for the first time, but I'm interested to know. Again, I know you definitely haven't had it easy. Yeah. Um, so growing up then, where did you grow up? Grew up in um, Ampula Road in Crocky. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it, yeah. And what, what so was that like? Um, all right, just, just where I'm from, so, um, yeah, it was good. It was good, it's, yeah, it was good. And you, you live with, when I met you, obviously, with yeah. your nan and granddad, wasn't you? Yeah, um, yeah, well, I lived with my nan and granddad for a little bit, and then, um, my granddad was a little bit unwell at the time, so I was like missing the gym and just asking about as a kid barely and hmm. so my nan had enough of me and fucking chucked me out. So yeah, um I had a hard, hard little couple of months after that, just weren't training, weren't weren't really interested in doing boxing no more or just asking around and get around with the wrong people, really, but, um, yeah, then I moved in with uh, my mate and just got back into the gym and, um, got back on track. Yeah, just got back on track and got back into the boxing and, yeah, it's, it's paying off now. Mm. I'm happy it we'll, changed my we'll, life around. We'll come back to that then in a minute, so then, like, growing up, yeah, like, obviously, being, like, being younger, you've got a brother, haven't you? Yeah. You've no Scott. Any more siblings, or is it just you and Scott? Um, yeah, I've got um, another little brother, um, Harry, and I've got a little sister, Maggie, but different dads, me and Scott have got the same dad. Um, but yeah, growing up with, with Scott, um, yeah, we used to kill each other every day. I think that's the reason why I'm so tough now. And mm. Yeah, and he was perfect for sparring because we was around the same height and same weight. And yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and he's, good. he's got a lot of cases as well, isn't he? Yeah, he was good. He was good. Mm. Um, so when you were younger then, did, how, how old was when you got into boxing? Um, 
Apoi ce e vorba? Mi-mi pierdut de bine, știi, ce e 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 ce Since I've been seven and just kept on going. And when he come round and I say, oh, I can't, can't be bought the granddad, I don't want to go. He used to say, you're going up the boxing gym. So I had no choice really. Mm. So I just kept on going and it's paying off now. So Do you I'm feel happy. like it's something what you, you, f- like you kind of fell, I would say fell in love with, but you enjoyed it from an early age? Or is it something what like basically through your granddad making you go there? You kind of fell in love with it as you went along. Um, well, I've always enjoyed fighting and boxing, but I think if it weren't my granddad on my back, constantly saying, like, you're going to the gym, you've got to go, um, then I don't think I'll be where I am now without that little bit of extra push. Mm. Um, but yeah, um, I enjoy it. Do you think it'd be fair to say your granddad's your biggest fan? Yeah, 100%. He is, isn't he? My biggest supporter, yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, I got to meet Jack's granddad, didn't I? He's actually become my mate now as well. Yeah. I have a little text now and again. But um, yeah, I can definitely like testify. He's, he's a special man, your granddad. Like, I ask about him a lot, don't I? Yeah, you ask about him. How I, I, I was Terry? Yeah. What's he doing? He's, um, yeah, he's boss my granddad yeah. this all day. Mm. He's, uh, he's not in the best health at the minute, is he? But he's no. still still getting a boat on his pedal bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up and down, one thing, of, yeah. One thing about my granddad, he ate sitting in, yeah. in the house, so um, he's not in the best of health, but um, nothing stops him. No, he's a tough old man. He's out he? on his bike every day doing laps of crocky, mm-hmm. or he's exercising in the house. He doesn't even sit down and watch telly. Yeah. He stands it up on, on doing exercises. I'm like, just chill, granddad, no. but he mm-hmm. won't have it. But then I suppose in some ways I've had conversations where you were know you're not meant to be in the gym. Or you're meant to be you're not meant to be training, but you still Yeah, it's still, still going up in the gym and sneaking in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, if I don't if I don't go to the gym or like I know it's some some day sometimes it's good to just have a rest day, but um if I don't go to the gym, like I don't I don't feel myself like after, always after I've been in the gym and I've done a session, even if it's a hard one or a light one, I come out walking, walking from the gym feeling good. Feeling better. And than yeah, yourself. it just sets me day up then. Like, like I've done something good. So, what would a normal like, day in the life of Jack look like? Just on a standard, like Monday to Friday with training and routine and stuff? Yeah, so, I wake up, I'll have um, obviously my breakfast, um, and then I go to the gym, the boxing gym. It's always the boxing gym of a of a morning, about nine o'clock, then I'll uh, train hard in the gym with Job and Declan and the other boxers, come home, um, have a little sleep, jump in the shower and that, um, and then have a little bite to eat and then go back and do my second session, then it'll either be running, sprints or s and strength and conditioning, mm. and then go home, have something to eat, have a shower, and then just chill, really. Is it is it Joe and Declan who give you, like, your structure and tell you what to do on what days? And yeah. They plan everything out for you? Yeah, so on um, Monday to Friday, every morning, it, it's boxing, and then of a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it'll always be a run. Tuesday, Thursday, strength and conditioning mm-hmm. of a night time. Saturday is a recovery session, so I'll go for, like, a swim or do a little jog and then of a Sunday um, some days I might chill or go out go and do something but um, some days I just I just go to the gym just go get a little session yeah it? not mad but just little get a little steam sweater. and sauna little, little swim <coughs> but but yeah I feel good afterwards how have you found making obviously the transition because from Crocky originally aren't you yeah. amateur you had nearly what 80 about 80 fights yeah thereabouts yeah. And then obviously going over to did you go to any other gyms before you, you went with Joe and Declan? Yeah, um 
So basically, yeah, Danny Vaughan for a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, I was up in Scotland um, with with Danny Vaughan, Dominic Vaughan, um, just going around other other gyms, um, seeing who we wanted to be with. Mm. Um, so obviously, it's a it's a tough um, tough it's a sport. Decision, isn't it? It's a big decision who 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 you decide to go with. So I went um, went to Everton Red Triangle as well. Um, and then I went to the Tundra. And you go to Manchester for a bit too? Yeah, I went to Manchester for a bit Who as well. Who um, He had... Um, I forgot his name now. He was a good coach though. Very good coach. Um, he had Terry Turbo. Um, he's had a few good boxers. Mm. I was with him for um, a couple of months, just just training. And then I went into the Tundra and it just... Just thought, yeah, this is the right place for me. I just first time I hit the pads with Joe and that, like we both just like connected, connected. in a way, yeah. Mm. And yeah, and I think you've definitely found the right place. Obviously, I know Joe and Declan personally, and I'm not close mates with them, but yeah, definitely go back a good while. And uh, like I was happy when you were there because again, I've seen a bit about Joe's coaching and I know the type of person he is. So. I think he's probably a good person, isn't he, for you, really? Yeah, he's Keep a good, good person. Eye on you doesn't have no messing, does he? Yeah, no messing about. Um, got to turn up on time. Um, yeah, he doesn't... You'd either get in, put in the work, or, mm. or don't turn up. So. But he's a younger coach as well, isn't he? So he's not yeah. like too set in. I know he's still... Le- obviously, he'd be learning himself. Yeah, obviously, he's um, had um, good boxers in the, in the past. David Price, Liam Smith... Mm. Josh Taylor, um, he's had he's had a good a good. A good he doesn't strike me as one of them coaches who are set and like it's my way or like. Yeah, you know um, he's open, isn't he? Yeah, he's open, and yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to have Joe and Declan in my mm-hmm. corner because I know I'm in good hands and I'm gonna go to the very top with both of them. Mm, make your job easy, doesn't it? Just gotta train, haven't you? Yeah, just gotta train hard. Listen to what they tell me to do and eat the right food. Yeah, and that's the other <laughs> part for me. Eat the right food. How's that going, mate? Eating the right um, food. I find it. I find it hard, but um, like it's not a big drinker, or not an are you? No, I'm not a big drinker. Not a party, it's just yeah. it's between seven o'clock at night and like eleven. That's when like I decide does the chocolate come out or not. But you know when you're sat in bed. Yeah, I think that's where champions are made. Maybe between seven, know, between seven and eleven when it comes to diet. At, at the minute, um. I've got a nutritionist. Um, mm. Who's that? Um, Wayne Ambrose, he's one of the best he is. Okay. Um, so it's making life much easier for me. So all my calories are counted. Um, all my carbs, all my macros, everything. So And I'm enjoying the meals as well. So it makes makes life e- e- easier for me because I've had ones in the past where they're a bit plain and I'm, I'm like... Ah, this isn't for me, this, and then I go like my the first, auntie. Yeah, and then Laugh it gets boring. Bit, get a bit bland, don't you? Yeah, with with Wayne, he, he switches them up or he goes, you tell me what you like and I'll make it. And then, yeah, it just makes life much easier for me. Mm. So, yeah, camp's going well at the minute and my weight's coming down well. And, yeah, I'm so feeling, in terms feeling like good. support, boxing-based with your diet and all these things, your coaches, you've got everything like in a good place with that but like something I'd like to talk about is the support what you get from the other people as well and obviously Scott you manage it in the mate of mine yeah and like it's, in all honesty if you don't get many people who are that willing and that invested in someone f- in my opinion for who doesn't really want nothing in the turn he just wants to see you you do well doesn't he but I think there's so many people including like the lads from Crocky like you know you go to the shows and all that there's like so many kids even from my experience going to the shows they all come to watch you no, no, there's other people in, and they, they're a fan of everyone, but like it was always your name. You were there from like locally and from the gyms and the kids and things like that. It's like you've got like a good following, haven't you? Yeah, um, well, yeah, well, by ours, everyone gets behind each other. So mm-hmm. someone's doing something, like someone's doing well, like everyone will get behind, and the support that I've had since I've turned professional is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't expect it. Like, like when I was fought in the Echo Arena, like got got loads of kids sh- sh- screaming Jack. Yeah. All like 
on your shoulder it's and buff. it's like a thing in your feet. You'd be obviously with the help of Scott and things like that. Yeah, and um, yeah, I couldn't ask for um, a better manager early. He asked, doesn't take no money off me. Um, he doesn't ask for nothing. Um, and yeah, um, he just says you focus on training and I'll worry about everything and else. So all the stress, stress all, all the stress. So mm. also I've got to worry about is turning up time to the gym, um, eating healthy and training hard. Mm. That's always what I've got to worry about, everything else. Um, he worries about and sorts it for me. So I'm, I'm very grateful to have him as well. So if we rewind before all that then, because obviously I know a little bit about your history, what was it like growing up? Was it was it hard or was it easy? Or? Um, yeah, I wouldn't... I would say... Didn't have the best of upbringings, but... Um, it just makes you do your eye, really. Mm. But I haven't had it bad, you know what I mean? Like, my granddad's always been there for me. Um, like, if I ever needed anything or whatever, or my granddad will always, you know, you yeah, know get yeah, me. Yeah. He's always been there for me. But, yeah, um, yeah, for, yeah, it's been... And you said your nan you kicked know. it out at one point. Yeah, my nan kicked me out at, well, at one point, but... Um, yeah, I had, well, that was one of the hardest moments, like, because I, I quit boxing, um, I was at, at Arsenal and around, um, just getting in trouble and that. But, yeah, I'm, I'm happy I changed my life around and got back into boxing and, mm. um, yeah. So you went to Tenerife as well? For, not um, my my buyer, buyer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was that like? Oh, yeah, so on... So um, I've been going cro- up to Crocky Gym for the um, for a little while now, and then that's obviously where I met you. And um, I used to like always let on and like uh, and talk to me how are you mate and that, because we didn't really know each other, but used to bring your little lad up. Mm. So um, one day I was um, sat sat in um, in ours and my phone rings. So I've answered it, and it's been like, hello, who's this? It's been like, it's Mark. Do you want to go over to Spain? I was like... You sure? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was like, do you want to go over to Spain for the training camp? This is how so, it happened, isn't it? Yeah, so I was like, yeah. go on, yeah. He said, yeah, I, um, I book your flights. blah de blah de blah And then next minute you pick me up, and then... Took, took me to the airport and I went over there and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Mm. Um, didn't have to pay for nothing or mark short at all. It was um, it was boss. It was boss the, experience. The story behind that was obviously I got close to your granddad, didn't I? Yeah, speaking to my granddad, yeah. Um, and you, the granddad was turning up at the gym. Yeah, and, he'll never miss a Jack, session. And Jack wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your, your granddad was looking concerned and we didn't know what was going on. So obviously I've got a good mate, Tom Stoker, who's uh, he was based over there. He was working for MTK at the time, wasn't he? Yeah. Scouting and helping out and, and I think he was, was probably one of the main people over there. And um, I sent him a message saying, that, look, there's a lad here. He's got fucking absolutely mega potential. Everyone loves him. Just told him a little bit about you, basically. So I could have sent him over for you to have a little look at him. Um, and then, yeah, the next thing, mate, he was... He was over there, and I remember Tom will probably remember this as well if he does watch this at some point. But I remember you'd been over there the first day, and he sent me a voice note saying, Mark, fucking help, Mark, my words, if we can keep this kid on the straight and narrow, he'll be a world champion. And uh, and that was it then. I knew you were in, you were in good hands, and you were over there. For, it was a couple of months you were there, wasn't you? Yeah, I was there for um, the first time, was seven weeks, and then I come back home. I think it was about a week and you sent me back over again mm-hmm. for another seven and yeah it was it was um, a boss experience but he put uh, you in the tournament didn't he as well yeah i got put in the mtk box cup tournament in um, newcastle it was and i won it mm-hmm. that was um, a good experience as well so um yeah and i was going through a bit of an hard time at, at, at well just before i went over to spain so it half like open open my eyes up to it's more it's more to it's the more world to life. it's more to life and more to the world than 
just sat outside the shop house and about, you know what I mean, getting nowhere. So, um, yeah, it was, I couldn't, I couldn't thank you enough for, for what you did for me. So, mm. nice one, Mac. I know you've said that, haven't you? Yeah. Plenty of times anyway, but I think it's good for the likes of yourself, especially young lads, to get out there and actually see, like, what an opportunity with the talent what you've got. Like, I'm, I think the reason why, why you're on here is because every, not just me, everyone's got so much belief in you. I actually believe, like, there's certain people who are just put here to do one thing and nothing else. And I think that you've, for me, you find your thing that the, the conversations won't be bad anyway. I couldn't see you doing anything else. Do you know what I mean? If you weren't boxing, what, what, what would you be doing? Without boxing, I don't know what I'd be doing. Mm-hmm. Most probably getting in trouble or something, <laughs> yeah, or, or, do, or doing something um, mm-hmm. that I shouldn't be doing, but, yeah, um, but like, wait, at the minute, you used to live in, it's one of the lads, the John, isn't it? Yeah, he's John. Look, he's put you up and he's been looking after you, hasn't he, and helping out? Yeah, I live, um, I live with my me mate, um, it's uh, my me mate's uncle, John, so, yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah, the, it's like, yeah, he's been looking after me. He's been helping out. He's been helping out since I moved in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah the um, he's my standing conditioning coach as well, and and he's changed my life around as yeah, well. He's just got me super fit. Well, he? mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just one of the lads, and um, yeah, he's like family to me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, like a big thing with Ireland, like big over, like say we're all a product of our environment. Yeah. Like the position you're in now is you are a product of your environment, but in the sense that your environment, the people there are all coming together basically to support you and back you. As you said before, it's like in the likes of Crocs, and that sometimes people looking from the outside can think they're not the best areas, but if you want to their own and you show some potential and you know that you can actually do something with yourself, everyone's actually fucking come, couldn't have come together anymore to, help, yeah. to basically help you as much as they can after you. Yeah. And you pay it back to you, like obviously through the way you're hard and how hard you work and things of that so it's definitely uh, it, it's nice to see do you know what I mean yeah um, but what's the plans in terms of like now just keep training yeah got another fight coming up haven't we yeah so um, the 13th of April I'm fighting in Manchester uh, uh, Marina and I've got another one after that but I haven't announced it yet uh, but it's on the Peter McGrail undercard um, in the where is it again next door to the MNS Arena. Oh, okay. Um, the conference centre? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. What date's that? The 27th of April. Is it? So, You've been active, haven't you? Yeah, I've had, um, yeah, thanks to my managers, um, Scott John and Cuban Boxing for getting me out. Yeah. Um, what was it like making your debut in Dubai? Oh, it was boss. Um, it was good experience. Um yeah, it was the arena and everything. Mm. Um, it was the boss, like it proper setup, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a proper boss setup, and um, the the way I um, boxed as well. I didn't expect it. As soon as he hit, hit him, he just hun- crumbled. Yeah, he just crumbled and mm. and went. And yeah, it was a boss experience, and I had a little holiday after it as well. So, because. Um, it was good. Yeah, it's been all right, hasn't it? Yeah. A good, uh, nice good. journey so far, mate, hasn't it? Making yeah. a debut in Dubai on a show like that. Yeah, not many people can... And getting all the out of it as well. Yeah, I can say that they've done, done that. So. Mm. You've had three, is it three um, over there now? Yeah, three over there. And what are the people like over there? Because I know you stayed there for a little bit in like a camp, didn't you? You didn't train there. Yeah, um, so the, the gym that I train out of when I'm over there is Cuban boxing, so they've got um, a couple of Cubans over there and the way I class and all the people in the gym are all day um, prop, proper signs and when I'm there um, they all look after me so mm. it's good it's good do you like it there. over there? Um, yeah I do like it over there but um, I like the training over here better it's more um, structured it's more structured and um, sometimes it's too hot to go on a run outside or to do certain things mm-hmm. over there, but and then you find your own, haven't you, with with Joe and Declan, obviously, and then there's, who, who else is in the the gym? Um, so you've got Joe Declan, you've got John, um, 
the clutchman. Yeah. Um, and then you'd also have um, Carl. Carl's um, Carl Naylor. Yeah, Carl Naylor. Yeah, he's been coming coming in for a couple of months now, mm-hmm. and yeah, he's he ended up in the you trained him in Dubai. He was over on the bi- in Dubai on all the way, Carl. Yeah, yeah, he was all and took his pads with him. <laughs> yeah, he took his pads with him. Um, so, um, my job and Declan went there for um, while well, while I was doing my camp, mm-hmm. I was training with the Cuban um, coaches. But they speak Spanish, so I didn't have a clue what they were saying. Every time he had this little foam stick he did, and he was telling me to, like, hit it, slip, slip, because they throw loads of combinations, and my style's a little bit different. But every time, like, I, I do something wrong, um, the Cuban coach, Eduardo, used to um, swap me on the head with the um, foam stick. And then um, I was on Instagram, I was seeing that car was coming over, and... Um, I said to Carl, any chance um, you can come down the gym and take me on a few rounds of pads, please? And um, yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll, b- I'll bring me pads and, and take you on a f- on um, some rounds mm-hmm. whenever. And um, yeah, he just kept on coming down into the gym when he was meant to be on holiday. Just, he loves it. Yeah, he, he does. He loves it. And Quality pad man as well. Yeah, isn't he? he's very good. Very good. Um, and he's obviously been up in Joe's now, hasn't he? Giving, giving Joe a bit of help in Declan as well. Yeah, he comes in a couple of days a week and he helps out in the gym. And yeah, he's a very, very, very good mm. pad man. We say he's obviously he's learning a lot himself, so yeah. he's made up to be in there. Yeah, he's it's a few different um, boxes in there mm. as well. So what, what boxes are in there? So you've got um, Frankie Stringer, um, you've got Darren Till, Josh Taylor, even a jar mm-hmm. um, Who are the characters in the gym? The characters. Um, got to say Darren. And Darren's all day. He's funny. Mm. He has a um, lot of banter. Yeah. He has loads of banter. Um, you just have a lot of banter funny. in the gym. Yeah. Well, if you were with uh, Darren trained originally in Carbon, we'd like, don't get me wrong, we'd have a laugh, but when it was work, it was work. There was no like, we didn't, didn't even listen to music and nothing in, in the gym when we trained. Yeah, but I know uh, his dad and does he have a laugh at that before training, even Jordan training or what do you like? Yeah, we all we all get in and train that, but um yeah, we all have a bit of banter on that. Take um, the piss out of each other. Yeah, take the piss out of each other and um yeah, it's it's a good environment in the gym. You've got to have a laugh now and then, you know yeah, what I mean? But be happy. but obviously when we're training, we're training hard, we give it a hundred percent. And yeah. Um, and who uh, else is in there? So there's Frankie Stringer, Kevin Acharho. Um, then you've got um, Darren. You've got myself. You've got Diane. He's um, a Cuban. Mm. You've got Adera. He's another Cuban. Um, are they based? Are they staying over here now, or are they just here? Um, and they're based over here now. Are they? Yeah. Um, and they're some top top prospects, aren't they? Yeah. Um, both of them are going to be world champions. Um, Herrera, he's um, he's very special. Um, he's he's a super featherweight. I don't know how he makes the weight. He's massive for him and he can punch as well. Mm. And it's good having him in the gym as well, because we all learn from each other. And it's good to learn from a Cuban, because mm. you seem to, to have best. adapted pretty well to like the pro game. Obviously, the star being different from. Damage. You always had a bit of a different, like say, unusual style. Yeah. As an amateur, didn't you? Ain't like your standard, like. Yeah, you know, weren't my standard, like. So to say. Yeah, like. I can most like most people think I can just have a scrap on that, but I can I can do everything. Like, um, what's the word that you'll call it? Like. Un, like unpredictable. Yeah. That's what I am in there. Like Hard you don't know be. what I'm gonna do, but. Um, as a professional, um, everyone I haven't had the chance to show what I can do because of everyone's um, being stopped in, in the first round. Yeah, being got them out of there in a minute. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, when you're going into the fight, are you going in there with the intentions of getting them out in the first minute? Is that your goal, um, or are you going in there and just boxing? That just seems to be happening. Yeah, just go in there, just stay calm and relaxed, and just believe in myself, like. 
I'm going I'm gonna win. Mm. And I just if the knockout comes, it comes, but I never go looking for it. Mm. Once you've been it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, now I've got the power there, so mm. it's just about landing one. Are you looking forward to getting into the fights where you know you go into the later rounds or all the way and it's like yeah, I'm like you know. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, you obviously, he's done a lot of rounds sparring. You spar with top, top level lads who, obviously, a lot further on than you in terms of, like the career and things like that. Yeah, I'm um, looking. So you know, you've got it, obviously, don't you? Yeah, I've got the engine there. I can fight all day. I love it. But I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully soon, like someone who can give me them rounds and I can show you. What else I can do mm-hmm. in in the ring instead of just knocking people out in the first lap. But um, if that still carries on, I'm happy. Like if I can get them out of there under the minute. Yeah, but you don't feel any pressure. No, I don't feel any pressure. Look, <coughs> um, a win's a win to me. It's just about getting the win and getting the win in style. Mm. Boxing club. Minute, just improving as much as you can in between the fights. Yeah, every day I'm in the gym, I'm learning something new. Um, um, if I'm, if I'm like working on like new stuff, or if I'm doing something wrong, I'll keep practicing it until I get it right. Mm. You can never stop learning in in this sport. You're always learning something new. Who's probably the? Uh, would you say he's the best person you fought up to date? Um, it's in the amateurs, isn't it? Really? Yeah, in the amateurs. Is there any fight what really like stands out as like? Um, so, in the amateurs, I boxed the. Um, Did you have any rivalries in the amateurs? Anyone you boxed a couple of times? Um, I wouldn't say. No, not really, no. Um, but I boxed a lad um, from the Repton and. It was in the finals, it was. Um, Barney Doggerty, his name was. He was a traveller lad. And um, it was he, It was a close fight, it was. But, yeah, he was most probably the best. Um, he, yeah, he, he couldn't hit hard. Just one of them. Just hard to catch. Mm. I was just chasing him. He was just tapping me on the foot and I was just chasing him. Kept on chasing him, but yeah, he was um, very good. Anyone you boxed in the amateurs who's gone on to to like to actually be successful to really get somewhere? Um, oh yeah, I boxed an American lad in um, Ireland in the Monkstown Box Cup. Dorian Khan, his name was, and yeah, um, he's with Sam with Floyd Mayweather now, and he's doing well at the minute, and I beat him in the final and. Yeah, he was very, he was very good. Mm. Had a very good um, style, but he had like, I think it was, something had like, 90, 90 fights and uh, as not being beat. So I was the first person to beat him as an amateur. So that was um, good. Gosh, it was good. How many time wise, Ben? To be honest, mate, most of what I put on my questions, we've gone through. Most of what, we've, what I've got in here, maybe we pretty much covered it, you know. <laughs> Never had that problem, yeah, have we? Yeah. not done all like that. Fine, yeah. We st- we still get another 10 minutes or 15 minutes out of it, but it's more like the things like, it's like your future then. It's like where like to see yourself and, you know, what are you, obviously you know the goal, just to keep fighting and getting as good as you can, but like in yourself, or, you know, where do you see, how far do you actually see yourself going? Yeah, well, I wouldn't wouldn't be in this sport if I didn't think I can make it to the top. Um, believe that I'm gonna be a um, a multi weight world champion in the superfly division, bantamweight, super bantam, and if I fill out a bit more featherweight, mm. believe I'm gonna go to the very top. 
step by step. Do you make the weight easy? Um, in the past, um, I could have made it easier for myself, um, but now I'm on um, now I'm, I'm on these meals that I like. Um, the past couple of past two fights I've been on them, um, it's made life much easier for me because mm. it, it, it's hard, but it's got to be done. I remember when you were an amateur and like the lads would be saying they fucking nick you going in the chippy when <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a week or two weeks before the fight and you'd be saying I'm only getting chicken, they'd be like, he's fucking not getting chicken, he's getting all kinds in there. Did you? Yeah, so like as a as a um, <laughs> as a kid when I was going up the gym, I got the nickname Butties. Um or yeah, the cultures and that yeah. used to go Tatnam Butties because I used to walk in the gym with the kids of Bueno hanging out, out, out of my mouth and a bottle of coke. They'd be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, I'm just eating a chocolate bar, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't didn't really know much about nu- nutrition, but um, as since I like, I've turned professional and got a bit older, I realised it's, it's important what you put into your body. And, um, yeah, like, you at can't... The, at that level, maybe. At you that level, you can't be eating kinds of bowenos and having bottles of coke, you know mm. what I mean? Um, eat all them when you finish yeah eat, eat all them after your fight maybe mm-hmm. for a little couple of days but mm-hmm. yeah while, while I'm in camp I've got to stay um, strict and I, it can be hard at times but it's what I've got to do if yeah, I want to it, it? yeah it's worth it in the end and it's what I've got to do if I want to be the best mm-hmm. be in the best shape as possible it's Like, what was it like obviously training in Crocky then as you were growing up and all the support like what you've had from all the lads in the gym and the coaches it's a boss gym Local yeah. to me, I've mates with loads of the lads in there. Um, but what do you think that's done as a person? How do you think that's obviously helped you being around like the coaches and, and having that like structure and obviously your granddad there pushing you to to be actually in the gym and things like that? Boss, yeah. Um, like as I say, um, like growing up by ours, like growing up, it weren't really much to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always look forward to going the boxing gym because you're you with all your mates, you know what I mean, mm. and like you're all um, sparring or on the bags, have, having a laugh, and the atmosphere in the gym was boss, and yeah, I'm I'm just happy that I've stuck at it and it, it's it paying so off many, now. Yeah, it helps so many. It, yeah, like kids who go on ne- never to, you know, not to be professional boxers or to do it as a career. Yeah, it's like a massive thing, isn't it? Like everyone just gets in the gym, trains and has a laugh and you, it's good because you make mates forever mm. and... You learn discipline and things yeah, like that as like well, don't you? It's all, it's all different kids in there from different backgrounds and that, so it's, um, it's good. Everyone just gets together and it's a good atmosphere in there. Mm. Is there any potential people who you'd like to fight? Yeah, well... Um, where, where do you think, so you're at five and all now, so yeah. to be six. At what stage do you think? I know it's, it's maybe not a, it's maybe not even you should be asking this question to, but you know where do you see yourself starting to get them like you know the title fights British and things like that. How many fights off do you think you're at? Um, I just listen to me coach. Um, like on daily sab opponent to fight, so I say to me coach and that you know was our fight anyone, but it's about picking the right fights at the right time. And when P- we time, how many fights do you think? How many more fights before? I know you'll say. I'm ready for that level now. Yeah, in I want to... In terms of, realistically, how many fights you think it's going to be before you start stepping up? Because you, you are going to get to the point, in my opinion, where you're not going to get the fights what you need. Yeah. You've seen with a lot of fighters, once they start to get that attention, especially when, obviously, fucking uh, just knocking people out so, so early on, hurting people. You know, yeah. You're going to get to the point, are you, where you, you're going to struggle to get people where it makes any sense for them to fight you, you know? Yeah, I think I'm going to get moved forward fast, like, because not many people want to fight me. I've had five fights and I've got everyone out of there in the first round, so I'm um, going to have these two fights um, and then hopefully push for the title at mm. the end of the year, try and go for the British or whatever's available. Mm. Who's got the British now at your um, The British. Um I think it's Marcel Braithwaite, you know. Was it? Yeah, I think it's Marcel. I'm not too sure, though, but I'm sure it's him. 
You sparred Marshall, haven't you? Yeah, I've sparred Marshall a couple of times. He's yeah. a great lad, Marshall. Yeah, he's all day. He's a mate of mine too. Yeah, he's, he's boss a Wayne as well. Boss fella Wayne, yeah. There's loads, well, isn't he? When you, if you if you're looking at me, how many like top like scouts is coming through? Yeah, there's loads. But at the end of the day, it's a um, it's it's a sport, isn't it? And I want to be the best. So would you find would you? F- have any probably you've probably already done it plenty of times in the past and say would you have any issues fighting people you consider friends or things like that? The, like friends out outside the ring, but once I'm in the boxing ring and I'm fighting, no 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 one's me mate. You know what I mean? It's a it's a tough sport and you can get badly hurt in it, so yeah, I'm, no no one's me friend in a boxing ring. Mm. I think well, that's the right. Gotta have that mindset. Yeah, because you can you can get hurt in it, and I, yeah, I want to be the best. So, wanna wanna win everything. Can I wanna wanna beat everyone in mm-hmm. them white categories? Friends or no friends? Friends or no friends? Yeah, fight anyone. Mm-hmm. Whoever's got the belt and whoever's um, the best in the division, I wanna fight when the time's right. Mm-hmm. I think that's the attitude that you've got to. Yeah, you've got to have. Do you know what I mean? Because um, for as nice as you are outside of the ring, and people who get to know you, it's like it's not the same person. Is it? <laughs> it's not the same yeah. person. Is it once the uh, once that bell goes? Yeah, once that bell goes, it's um, it's fighting for my dream and fighting for mm-hmm. everything. I'm fighting for everyone who showed up. I'm fighting for myself. Everything that I've worked for since being a kid. It's it's. Um, a lot on the line, you know what I mean? Mm. Fighting for my future, so... Um, do, yeah. do you look at anyone or anyone who inspires you or who's to say, you know, you're looking at anyone at the minute and going, well, if they can do it then, you know? Yeah, um, Like Nick Borg's doing really well, isn't he? Yeah, it's, it's loads of um, good, 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 good fighters coming out of the city. Um, yeah, Nick Borg smashed it at mm. the minute. Believe that he... Um, he won the last yeah, fight. Yeah, he won the last fight and he got robbed. But he'll be back and I think Nick Ball will be a world champion. But um, He's a little tank, isn't he, Nick? Yeah, I've sparred Nick before. Have you? I've done um, only what once. Did, what weight's Nick? He's featherweight. He's a bit heavier than yeah. me. I've um, done six lines with him. He's, he's a like, fit lad as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's fit. He's like a little ball, just non-stop pressure. But yeah, yeah, me and him had a good spa. It's good, yeah. How do you reckon you get on with him now? Um... I'm only messing on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't want to say. I'm, I'm only messing. Yeah. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't put you in that position. Yeah. But he's a fucking. He's a great prospect, and you know what? One of the most exciting boxers I think at the minute just to watch. I love his style. Yeah, he's a little animal. Yeah, I think animal. he mixes like the. You know, for me, there's always been like a grey area where I've watched him boxing coming from like a wrestling and and my mate background. It's like there's that transition in between like clinching and boxing. And yeah, I think he, he gets in close, that. he's clever with it as well, yeah. he'll get in close and he, he's... He'll get round your back and hit you when yeah, you he's, shot he's got little short see. arms and he likes the uppercuts and mm. he's just... But he uses it well, doesn't he? Even yeah, see him, like, he lands a lot of jabs on all the yeah. fighters. Yeah, he's good. He's mm. good at what he does, closing the distance there. Who would you say has been your biggest inspiration then, in just in boxing or in in general? Um, inspiration in boxing? Like who do we look up to? Yeah, in a sense, yeah. Um, well, I don't know, it's a tough one, really. Um, like, I'll try to ring my granddad. He's like an inspiration to me because he keeps, he pushes me um, all the time, make sure that I'm in the gym and that. Mm. And, like, inspiration, like, my favourite fighter. Yeah. My favourite fighter, most probably... I've got a few. I like Floyd Mayweather, like Canelo. Is the only one you've ever watched and thought like mimic their style and all? I was fighting. I used to watch a lot of fights and study fighters and try and adopt like their styles and use things which I'd see working for them. Especially I could try and pick like fighters with similar body body type to me and see what was working for them. See if I could kind of pull it off when I was training and sparring. And the only one like that you kind of looked at and mirrored your style on, or is it something what you just find that's easily? Yeah. Um, I liked um, Roberto Duran. Um, I liked his style. He was um, he was tough. Mm. Every, um, 
schnell nicht immer die anderen Stunden. Ähm, ja, ich wüsste, ich habe alle Mann ein bisschen. Ich wüsste, 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 ich I mean, I know if she's through speaking to Joe and it's like the power's there, isn't it? Yeah, like, it's not many people at my weight division and um, most of them don't punch hard. So, it's... Do you think that's the, the, the main thing which, or the main, obviously you know you've got the boxing ability, but yeah. that's, the, that's the thing which, you've got which makes you stand out, it makes you different from most of the others. Yeah, because the, the power that I have got and um, I know I've got, It only takes one punch, so... Do you think that's something you've learned or something you were born with? Um, get told in the gym, it's something that I'm born with. Because I get told by um, people, who are, people who are even bigger than me, who, who I'm sparring and that. They're getting out of the ring and saying, I don't know where that's just come from, you've got freaky power. You know, for the size of me and the weight, mm. the weight of me, so... And, yeah. Do you I ever get, watch much in the gym? Prince Azim, yeah, I liked him. He mm. was good. He was exciting, good style. Yeah, he was really. exciting, yeah. Um, he was good to watch. He was mm. a good talker as well. And he, yeah. He How do you find it, talking on camera and things like that? Um, yeah, I think at first it was, like, it was hard. But it's just getting, it's just getting better and better at it. Just, just keep practicing it. Mm. And, yeah. I get do, there. do you think you'll be that fighter one day who's not just obviously doing all your talking in the ring, but you'll, you'll feel more comfortable? Because a lot of it now, you've got to be able to market yourself, haven't you, and things like that. Yeah, 100%. Some of the best um, fighters who are getting the biggest fights aren't necessarily always the, the best, best boxers, but yeah. the good talkers. So, mm. yeah, um, I always let me do my talking in, in the ring, but not really much of a big talker, but I um, believe I'm getting better. Each, each time I'm on camera, I'm getting better and better. But, yeah. Yeah, just getting more confident. Yeah, just getting Practice, a bit more it? confident, yeah. Um, a big part of why I asked you to come on early, for me, I'm like big into, like a few people I've had on, I obviously believe in the potential, what they've got, and I'm always thinking about that part too. And like you can sit here and, you know, say, this is what I'm going to achieve, basically, this is where I'm going. For me, obviously, the vision then is, in a couple of years' time, having the same person sitting back in the same the same place and saying, you know, I'll have the clips then to go. There's the clip from the first episode and, and that's where that's where they are now. So it's like that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. But not just the progression in terms of like your boxing ability. I think in a couple of years time when you're sitting in the same seat again and you're talking it'll be the development in actually how you how you can speak and things. I know for me, yeah, I'm fucking twelve podcasts in. And it's still something to struggle with. It just took me probably five minutes to get the intro and I fucking know everything yeah, right no. in terms of boxing. So I know it gets easier the more you do it. Um, but again, that's something what, like, there'll definitely be a part two at some point. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll see different levels in, in, in every way, not just in obviously where you are with your fighting skills and things, but with your talking. Um, do you enjoy it? Talking on camera? Um. Yeah, I'm getting better at it, like, yeah. I am um, not really much of a big talker, but, um, yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy you wouldn't have not a big fan, like, but you, you wouldn't want to believe me when I say that, but, yeah, it is what it is. Um, future goals, then? Future goals. Um, future goals are to be a multi-time um, world champion in different weight classes, and believe I can do it. Um, and be outside of that outside the ring um, dream goals are like obviously I like to give back one day if it obviously I believe that my dream's gonna come true like and I earn a good bit of money I like to give back to the community and do something good mm. and help, help people and help all the kids and that so I know you're a massive inspiration to the kids, like a lot of the kids in Crocky look up to you, so... Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be a nice thing to, to look forward to. Be good to get back one day, yeah. Mm. And obviously the gym as well, Crocky. Yeah. They fucking love the bones of you, Crocky, don't they? Yeah. I got up there, went up there the other mm. day and done um, 
um, a little bit of sparring with the kids and I forgot I watched some of them in. <laughs> I, come, I come out of it. Got an eyes and looked times. in the mirror. I had two shiners. <laughs> but, yeah, so... Maybe that's the answer then, mate. When you can't get your nose bar and partners, you have to just throw you back in fucking crap. Back in with the kids. Weeks. You get filled in. Um, next time I'm sparring, I'm going to put an egg guard on. Egg mm. guard on. Like I always ask people as well, coming towards the end of the podcast, what success? The, the minute I say success, what does that look like to Jack? Success? Yeah. Um, success is believing that you can, you can do it. Or success means... Like, like, just believe in yourself. Believe, believe that you can do anything that you can. You can do anything that you put your mind to it. And if you work hard and you really want it, you're gonna do it, and you'll be successful. Mm. So I believe. That's your definition. Yeah, believe everything happens for the reason, and if if you want it that bad, you'll go and do it, mm. and, and be successful with whatever you decide to do. What makes you happy? Um, happy. When are you happy? Just can happy. be something dead simple. Doesn't have to be like. I'm. When's Jack happy? Um, to be honest, I'm happy all the time, but mainly when I'm in the gym or after I'm leaving the gym. That's when I feel happy. I feel good in myself. Like yeah. When you feel like you're progressing or, and getting better. Or or when I'm allowed to eat a bit of a bit a bit of chocolate <laughs> and that. So when a I'm happy. Like in the Buenos. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm off. Um, yeah. When I'm off my diet. Um, happy. Anyone to wrap it up, mate, you'd like to thank? Yeah. In particular, um, I know you'd have a fucking massive list and it's easy to forget sometimes, but... Yeah, I, I like to thank um, Mark for getting me on the, the podcast. I um, want to thank all my sponsors as well. Um, Frequency. Um, Hassan and Mark who sought me out in, in Frequency gear and it's good grip. What about the, the people who are obviously around you at the minute helping you? Yeah, um, I want to thank um, Scott John, um, my managers, mm. for keeping me active and keeping me on track, um, like family to me. and support amazing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, the got? support that they give me is amazing. and They just say, just focus on training and your boxing will worry about everything mm. else. Um, so, yeah, the... I'm thankful for them and um, thankful for Job and Declan um, to get me where I am now and obviously where it all started, the Crocky Gym, because mm-hmm. that's where it all it all started for me. Um, all the coaches in there, Thomas Rooney, Phil, um, Tommy, Richie Rooney, mm-hmm. Jason. Jason. So, yeah, I want to thank all them. And... Um, my granddad, yeah, for the main man in the main man, that. yeah. To without him, I wouldn't be where I am mm. now. Um, just keeping me on track, really. Yeah, what a man, his boss, and yeah, um, obviously, my mate, my mate's family who I live with, um, who took me in, and yeah, I want to thank them as well because mm. I don't know what I'll be doing now, most probably. But I know where they, I'll be. You, like you said before, everything happens. I believe for, everything for happens reason, for a reason. I believe yeah. you found your pattern. The reason there's so much support and so many people around you is because they know it as well. Like everyone yeah. around you knows. Like, like that's what you're put here to do. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you stay on, on the right track with your and you do all the right things, then it's done. It's going to pay off. Mm, it's got done, a, yeah. If you believe, like, if you've got a talent or you've got that sort of stick to it and give it mm. 100% and... It'll pay off in the end. Mm. And it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's paying off, yeah. Mm. Um, any messages then for any young ones then in the area or any of the kids who look up to you? Just yeah, to finish um, the last thing. Yeah, I want to say to them, um, nothing's impossible, you know what I mean? If if um, you're enjoying something or you want to do something, um, believe, believe that you're the best at it and, yeah, just keep, just keep doing um, just keep doing well. Keep um, working hard. Yeah, keep working hard and keep showing up and you'll be successful. Mm-hmm. Just don't stop. Sound okay, champ. Well, I'm going to say thanks for coming on. I'm, I'm excited, mate, for when you come back in a couple of years' time and 
hopefully we'll just, have this um, a couch this full couch full of belts. Yeah, that's the plan, mate. Yeah. And uh, it's gonna happen as well, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Sam, it's right, Jack. Thank you. Nice one, Mark. Today's episode is sponsored by Frequency Fitness, the UK's fastest growing premium activewear brand, and IC Insurance Liverpool, the leading insurance broker in the Northwest, offering competitive rates for all types of commercial, business, fleet, property, and public liability insurance.